Hello, my name is Farish, and I'm a California-based developer. And over the last few years, APIs have become increasingly commonplace. So in this video, we're going to talk about what are APIs and what are some of the reasons why APIs are being used. To start things off, let's go over what API stands for. And it stands for Application Programming Interface. And you can think of this as a contract for software to communicate with each other. Well, what do I mean by this statement? Like a real contract, there's a set of rules that as a developer, you have to follow. As long as you follow the rules, the API will talk to your software, usually in the case of returning some data. If you don't follow the rules, the API won't send you back what you expected and in most cases will break your application. Now this allows your software components to communicate with the API components. Now you may be wondering, where does this contract come from? Well, the API developers created the contract when they made the API. And these rules are the instructions given on how to use the API in the API documentation. And the one thing that really isn't mentioned is that in most cases, this is a one-sided contract. You have to follow the rules given. You can't make your own. So how does this API communication process work? Well, out there, there's a server. And on the server is a database. And connected to that database is an API. And you can kind of think of the API like a gateway. You as a developer and through your client communicate through the API. The gateway sends your request to the server. The server then connects to the database and returns the data you requested back to your client. You can also think of this like being at a restaurant. The menu is your contract, it gives you what you can order specifically from the API. And then you send your requests through your API gateway, which in this case you can think of as your waiter. And the waiter goes to the chef, which you can think of as the server, and the database is the ingredients that he has access to. And the chef will take out certain ingredients, makes your meal, which you can think of as your API requests, and give it back to your waiter. The waiter then heads to your table and delivers it to you. And at that point, you have to decide how to consume it. And what I mean by how to consume it is you have to take this data and manipulate it and present it or do something with it. Now, we're going to go over a real world example by looking at Yelp's API. We're going to go through the documentation and do a simple request but maybe that'll give you an idea of what's going on here and how you would interact with the API in general. Now I'm over here at Yelp's documentation page and to get started, I'm gonna click on get started and it's gonna bring you to the manage app page. And what you see here is there's some blurred out items for security reasons. The main one that's blurred out is my API key. Now, if I didn't have a app here, uh, it would give you an option to create an app. And I just wanted to let you know that, but you should always protect your API key. And I wanna emphasize that. If you give out your API key and it's a paid service, malicious actors might use it on their own behalf and ring up thousands and thousands of dollars in charges. And I've heard of these stories before on the internet. So it's pretty crucial to avoid giving out your API key. Now there's a lot of information here in the documentation and you can see that all on the left menu plus different guides and a platform and everything. But we're gonna do a basic API request and all we need to do is go through the introduction page. So I'm gonna click on that. And what you see here is a list of different endpoints. So there's a business search, a phone search, a transaction search, and others. But what we're going to start with is the basics. So let's go with the first search item, which is a business search. And there's a lot of information here, but let's start from the top. What we want to focus on is the request. And if you see, it says get, and it gives you this long URL. That's your URL to make your API requests. 
and right below that is your parameters. And I want to focus on the first two. So the first one is term. And if you notice on the right side, there's a description and it tells you that this is optional, but it also gives you examples on how to use this, which is pretty crucial here. Then the second one is location and it will emphasize that it's required, but you could use longitude or latitude instead. And that's not something most normal people do. So we're going to stick with location and we're just going to use like a city name, specifically Los Angeles. Believe it or not, with the API key, we have enough information to run our first API requests. So I want to move into an interactive coding environment and do that so you can see what the results look like. So I'm over here in REPL and what I've done is I've written a JavaScript fetch requests. And what I want to emphasize here is that you can use any language you like. This is what I'm comfortable with. But because you may be programming into Python, Ruby or other languages, I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty of exactly how this works. But I did want to point out that over here in this fetch request, I do have the base URL that's listed. I also included term and location as it was mentioned in the documentation. I'm also passing over my API key and without these four items, this wouldn't work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit run. And what I'm searching for here is Mexican and Los Angeles. So I'm looking for Mexican food in Los Angeles. I'm going to hit run and it's going to take a second. And all of a sudden I have this information over here and this is all the results given to me from Yelp for Mexican restaurants in Los Angeles. And if you notice, it's coming back as a JSON object. And there's a lot of information here, addresses, names, phone numbers, whether they deliver. But the most important thing here is something I mentioned earlier in the video, that you need to take this data and consume it. You have to manipulate it in any format you need to in order to have this be presented on your website. And this is where API could be handy because it adds extra functionality to your website that you didn't have to program for outside of the API request. I've talked a lot about what are APIs and how do they work, but I haven't brought up why companies like Yelp would offer one. So let's take a few minutes to discuss that. Now, many companies that you use behind the scenes have an API that runs their system. Some of them, like Yelp, offer their APIs to the public. Well, why is that? Every company has different reasons, but in Yelp's case, it's to expand their reach. They offer advertisement services to restaurants. The more websites that use their data, the higher advertisement rates they can charge. Now, other companies offer APIs as a software as a service. You pay for the API because they believe what they offer will be cheaper than what you or your company will pay to develop it on their own. Twilio is a great example of this scenario. They offer voice over IP, SMS, and other communication services. And unlike many other API providers that only charge a monthly fee, Twilio charges each time their API service is used. Every phone call, every text, every communication through Twilio's API results in a fee. And you may be wondering how they can get away with this pricing structure and be successful. Well, in this scenario, the infrastructure costs of building a communication network is very high. So instead of you or your company having to build this whole network and maintain it, you're reducing your costs by using Twilio's API. And if you think about it with technology having so many startups, costs is a major factor when you're looking for funds from investors. The last reason why companies use APIs is because it offers an easy path for expansion. And what I mean by that is that APIs are designed to deliver data regardless of the platform. 
So if you're working for a company and they start off with a website, as long as it was built with the API behind the scenes, you can easily transfer that data to mobile simply by calling the API. That code that I had showed earlier to make the API request will work on a web page or on a React Native app. I don't have to reinvent the wheel just so I can have seamless data integration between my web platform and my mobile platform. So these are just a few of the reasons why APIs are used. So let's do a quick recap and move on to the end of the video. Now, first I went over what is an API and I called it a contract for data. Second, I talked about why companies use APIs, but the overall theme is that they reduce costs. Lastly, I just like to remind you that learning about APIs is a good thing to add to your developer's toolbox. Thanks for watching. Now, if you want to take your API skills to the next level, head on over to Code Academy. Now, if you'd like to join the conversation, leave a comment below and don't forget to hit subscribe for future videos. Happy coding.